Yo, what is going on guys? Hess here, CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys want to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description and happy shopping. Today's video, I want to go ahead and start this series. Actually, I started it last month, uh, but because of the move and stuff, I actually didn't get a chance to finish the video in time, so I just felt like it was stale by time I wanted to release it to you. But this is a new sneaker series that I wanted to start every month, and I basically just want to cover a lot of the sneaker resale flops as well as the successes from the previous month. I thought this would be a fun uh, series to start and do. And if you guys like this content, uh, give the video a thumbs up and let me know. Sometimes I'll do face videos, but sometimes I may not. Um, leave a comment if you guys prefer either which way for these type of videos as well. But March seemed to be kind of a slow month for sneakers. At least it felt like it was a slow month. So there was not a lot of super heaters in March. Uh, they definitely felt like there was a lot more flops, and we'll cover some of those in this video. But first, I wanted to cover a couple of Rising Star sneakers that basically just caught my eye and caught your guys' eye via Twitter. At least, I pulled you guys on Twitter. And some sneakers that were really shocking to see the resale climb so high. So, first one is the Dave White Air Jordan 1s. Um, unbelievable how high those have climbed in price. Um, last year, at this time, they were selling for like 180 it seemed like. 190 maybe and now they're over $500 so that was a shocker another one is the northern light foam posits I was really shocked to see those climb up over $700 or so I actually have those ones as well as the Dave White's and I'm just looking through my inventory I'm, I'm like wow I can't believe those are worth over 700 considering foam posits are kind of dead right now and the last one to mention is the Witherspoons I can't believe those are over a thousand dollars in select sizes as well I mean they were selling for four or five hundred dollars and then restocks here and there happen and now those things are up over a rack so crazy to see the longevity of that possibly though because this is air max month uh there was a little bit of an inflated price but any which way you slice it that's a crazy amount of money uh for that shoe so if you guys saw some resale rising stars um on StockX or anything else out there on the open market leave a comment on what sneaker you guys saw just jump up just out of nowhere i always love to kind of see those type of responses so moving on to the resale flops we're going to go ahead and start off with the Yeezy Boost 700 V2 Geodes. Definitely a flop. Those things didn't do very well on the resale market. Obviously, a lot of people were comparing them to the Mob because of the coloring was so uh, similar. Um, I did a comparison video to the two, and actually I like the Geodes better, uh, but the resale is just not there. So if you bought them to flip, you're probably sitting on a $300 pair of rocks. And, um, haha, Geode rocks. Uh. Not funny. Also worth mentioning is the Inertia 700s. Those things were kind of flops as well. Some sizes might be selling for a little bit over retail, but for the most part, those things are sitting right around retail. Another flop in my mind is the Tinker Air Jordan 3s. I personally love the shoe. I own the shoe. I bought them and I think they're fresh, but resale wise, they're just not there. They're sitting at retail. That's when you obviously know there's going to be a resale flop. And for those people that bought them, there's going to be a mass influx of people that are returning them. So maybe check your outlets if you're trying to get them for a little bit of a discount. But at the end of the day, just not a pair that people are super excited about. I personally love them though, and I'm happy that I bought them. Also released on the same day were the Phantom Air Jordan 1s, and those ones were pretty much flops as well. I was actually kind of shocked to see that. I bought a pair on sneakers thinking they were gonna sell out and I wouldn't be able to get a pair of them. But they were flops as well. They're sitting on shelves and they're not selling for resale, in fact, um, at first they were selling for like 200s or so and now they're just dipping. So moving on we have the Adidas Ultra Boost Game of Thrones collection. There was six colorways in total that released. I would have to say that all of them are pretty much flops though. There are only a couple that are selling for a little bit above retail. You're not making any money on a $180 shoe. So I do think they're a dope collection as I mentioned in my video of the Targaryen pair. But I feel like they could have just done more and they didn't do quite enough for that collaboration. So unfortunately um, those ones seem to be a pretty big flop. But they were also a pretty big widespread release so it was a seller for the brand which means they made a good amount of money for them just the resale market is kind of the only thing that is floundering and speaking of floundering the air tailwind 4 with the supreme collaboration that one is another one of those ones that i personally bought in fact you'll see three of these shoes in an unboxing video from me if you haven't seen it on my channel already um, i personally love them once i got them in hand i was like these are super fresh but it's definitely a collaboration that people weren't feeling the resale is not there on the shoes and I'm okay with it personally. I mean, I just love the Tailwind 4. Uh, it's not one that a lot of people are going to like or understand. Uh, slap the Supreme branding on it. And then, of course, there's a little bit more hype. But a lot of the Nike and Supreme collaboration just really overall haven't been doing very well lately. And part of the reason why is because they choose really bizarre um, models to, to collab with. Regardless, that one was one that I was happy to get. Overall resale, though, not it if you were trying to make some money. Another flop to discuss is the Air Max 90 Mars Landing. 
I feel like that was the main Air Max Day uh, release, and for some reason we didn't see too much Air Max Day releases. I think that they had a whole idea of what they were supposed to be bringing out, and a lot of it was delayed till April. But uh, but regardless of that, I mean, that was one of those shoes that was kind of hyped up, and then it just seemed like out of nowhere, it's just selling for retail close to now. So definitely a good one if you're trying to pick it up, but overall, I don't think people are feeling that shoe, like the Moon Landing one uh, from years ago. And the Moon Landing one had the Lunalon midsole, I believe, so this one is like, a little bit more true to form, but at the end of the day, it's just not one that people were interested in. So surprised to see that. Nonetheless, that's another one that definitely flopped. And the last flop to talk about is the LeBron 16 Low Atmos Safari. And this was a collaboration actually with Atmos. So it wasn't just the theme shoe that was kind of pulling from the inspiration from the Atmos Air Maxes. Uh, but it was just a shoe that didn't do very well. Retail is $175. A couple sizes here and there are selling for a decent amount over retail, but for the most part though, on average size, you're not gonna make any money, you're gonna lose a little bit of money. So that is another one that uh, I would say is a flop. So that covers all of March's flops. And again, if you guys are liking this style of video, feel free to leave me the feedback in the comment section. So the resale winners of the month. Surprisingly enough, the uh, Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Clays are one of the resale winners. And it's one that you can probably make 100 bucks on. Uh, the prices are gonna go down in the next week or so, probably because a lot of people are getting their shipments right now. Uh, but the prices are going to probably end up going uh, back up. And I'm surprised. I think that they actually look pretty good in hand. I just got my pair, so expect a video on my channel. But um, but yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's it's an interesting shoe where I thought it was going to do terrible. Everybody's talking about the Yeezy V2 hype being dead. They need to stop making colorways and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden the statics drop. And then all of a sudden people are feeling the Yeezys again. I don't know. I don't know any rhyme or reason why that's the case. I mean, I think it's a good thing that they're making more colorways, but I feel like they need to have more limited releases. And this is kind of... The case with the clays because it was a regional release then they also had two other colorways released the hyperspace and then the, i believe it's called the true form correct me if i'm wrong but those two other colorways were regional as well so all three of these colorways only had a certain area on the globe that they released um the u.s got the clays which is the ones that i ended up getting but uh, but i think that overall the resale on them are pretty good surprisingly and you can at least make 100 bucks a pair close to uh, which is definitely something that dropped off with the creams and some of the other colorways that dropped previously. So 350 is not dead in, by any means, in my opinion. I think it's summertime, spring's coming up. It's going to be a great shoe to be wearing. It's a comfortable shoe. Personally, I think it's great to be versatile enough to go from an Air Jordan 1 to an Air Jordan 3 to a Yeezy 350 Boost. I mean, the 350s are super, super comfortable, the most comfortable of the three shoes that I just named. So I think it's a good move from uh, Kanye and Adidas to keep releasing more colorways. And I said it already, and I'll say it again, but they do need to cater to the resale market to some capacity where you have limited high demand colorways that end up releasing. And in this case, again, they did the regional launch, which was super smart. Then you have the other GR releases of the same model. So it, it gives those other people that aren't able to get the limited ones still an ability to buy the shoe. But as long as you're feeding all of the different types of families out there, um, you're going to be good. And I think that Adidas is hopefully going to start doing uh, a little bit more of the limited exclusive side of things. And I think Adidas specifically needs to hone in and do that on a regular basis for their products because they fail to do that. They do a limited release of a first product, but then they mass produce it um, in the same exact colorway, not just the shoe, the same exact colorway. They re-release it and then mass produce it. It's just silly. They should do like one limited release per every three to five mainstream, like full on retailer uh, releases. That's my personal opinion. And that's only to feed um, the different sectors of the market. And that's my thoughts. But leave a comment on your guys' thoughts in the comment section. It's always appreciated, again, if you guys do that. Another one that released that people probably didn't even know about, but it's a shoe that I've actually wanted to try. I just actually haven't got my hands on yet. $675 retail. And I'm talking about the Nike Zoom Vaporfly Elite Flyprint. It was a Chicago, New York Marathon and Tokyo release. And it released on March 4th for $675. Resale is upwards of one, two, three thousand dollars on that shoe. It's a fly print though. It's 3D printed upper. It has a Zoom X cushioning with the carbon fiber shank plate, similar to the 4%, which I've done a lot of reviews on. So it's definitely one of those shoes that I'm interested in seeing. 675 is crazy though, but um, even crazier that there's a resale market uh, on that shoe, even with that insane price point. But part of the reason though is just because it's super, super limited. Only a select few people got those shoes in those select regions. But one of the most limited releases in the month. One of the ones that surprised me the most was the Alia May. I don't know how to say her name. I'm terrible for um, trying to verbalize that. But the Rust Pink Air Jordan 6s 
Surprising to see that the largest sizes for dudes is actually selling. Size 12s are selling for quite a bit over uh, retail. Um, I personally wouldn't have copped them, but man, it's insane to see that they're actually having some uh, resale. It's not the first time we've seen that. On my previous month, the um, Air Jordan ones from the All-Star Weekend uh, was the patent leather, the UNC ones. Those ones were another one that was a shocker to see the resale go so crazy on those originally. Women's sizes to size 12 is a smart thing from Jordan brand. They needed to do more of that apparently, especially with the hyped up Jordan ones at this period of time. All right, so the last one that I wanted to talk about, which was a really big shocker to me personally, was the Adidas Speed Factory AM4. I know, right? Seriously. Um, the Captain Marvel edition, which kind of released out of nowhere, but was themed after Captain Marvel. I saw these like right after the movie came out and the resale on some of the sizes are actually up there. So it's surprised to see you can double your money on a pair of AM4s when most of the other ones you can buy for half price. But the Captain Marvel joints wrap up the resale wins, at least in some select sizes. Uh, what shoes did I get right? What shoes did I get wrong? What shoes did I miss uh, on either side of the spectrum? The resale misses, the resale hits. Um, this is kind of an interesting style of video for me to do. I don't really micromanage the resale market that much, but it's actually kind of fun to uh, look at it and kind of give it an analysis because there's some shoes that, again, that are just really shocking to see the resale prices go sky high. And other ones, it gives you the opportunity to maybe just keep a close eye on them uh, because some of them are just gonna drop just low enough to get in your price range where you can actually buy them once the hype kind of dies down. So. Uh, twofold reasons why it's important to pay attention to the market. There's some shoes that I definitely want that I missed out on release and this is an opportunity for me to keep looking. My kid is running around screaming outside so I don't know if you can hear him but I need to go pay attention to my fam. Uh, yeah, like this video if you guys like the concept though please. I definitely want to know if I should continue it or not. I think I'm going to try for a couple months at least um, and really make an effort to do so in the first week after the previous month is over so I can give you guys kind of a feel for how the market went the previous month. I'm trying to hit 500,000 subscribers though so if you guys are new to my video hit the subscribe button, notification bell if you want to be notified of when the videos are live and thank you guys for stopping by and watching more videos soon. Peace guys.